Why might the most important position battles be happening in the defensive backfield? We'll discuss coming up next here on Locked On Sooners. You are Locked On Sooners, your daily podcast on the Oklahoma Sooners. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, Sooner Nation? Welcome to Locked On Sooners, and thank you for making Locked On Sooners your first listen every single day. Shout out to all the everydayers out there. Today's episode is brought to you by LinkedIn. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high-stakes wager for your small business. That's why LinkedIn Jobs helps find the right people for your team faster and for free. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college terms and conditions apply. My name is John Williams. You can follow me on Twitter at John nine Williams. The show is at locked on Sooners and make sure you're subscribed to locked on Sooners wherever you get your podcasts and over on YouTube. Also hit that notification bell and that like button to let you know when new episodes drop. We've been going position by position this off season to talk about the Oklahoma Sooners as we get ready for the 2024 season. That brings us to defensive back. And as I look at the defensive back position for the Sooners, I think it really could be the most important position battle that we're going to see this summer, this, you know, getting ready for fall camp and in the early going in non-conference play. Let me start with a big picture view of why I think defensive backfield cornerback safety is arguably the most important position battle. First, you talk about what you expect this Oklahoma Sooners defense to be in year three of the Brent Venables defense in year three of the Brent Venables era. And we expect it to take a step towards elite defense. Okay. In 2022, they were not good. The 99th ranked scoring defense in 2023, they jumped up almost a touchdown a game up to 49th in the nation in scoring defense at 23.5 points per game. Now heading into 2024 year three of the Brent Venables defense my man Josh Helmer he outlined that a number of times over the course of the show over the last six months year the year three is that time where they take that next step into a top 20 top 15 top 10 defense and I think that's the expectation that most people have for this team heading into this year is that okay maybe they're not the number one ranked defense in the nation but they do take a step into becoming one of the top 10 defenses and maybe a fringe top 10 defense. Well, we feel really, really good about the defensive line save for, okay, we need a pass rusher to step up to give Oklahoma a down in down out elite pass rush option. We've, we've, we like the options that are there. We just don't know who is going to step up and become that big time pass rushing threat, you know, like a Ronnie Perkins or a Nick Bonito, someone that's going to be able to, to go get the quarterback on a, big time third down and put pressure on them, make them throw the ball away early, what have you. We love the linebacker court. We love its depth. It's got some position battles happening as well at uh, the other spot next to Danny Stutzman. Cheetah might have a little bit of position battle happening as well, but you love the depth. You love your options that are there. You feel really, really good about the direction of both the defensive line and the linebackers heading into 2024. Again, third year, Brent Venables, first year under Zach Alley, Todd Bates, Miguel Chavis. They've really done a great job recruiting and developing the defensive line. Now we'll see what Zach Alley can do with this linebacker unit. At defensive back, though, we got a lot of talent, but I think we've got some big questions. So you look at one of the cornerback positions. Okay, Gentry, Gentry Williams is what is who everybody is expecting to start at one of your cornerback positions. The issue there, still recovering from off-season shoulder surgery. You're hoping that he's going to be good to go by fall camp and ready to be one of your starting corners. And the hope is you can keep him on the field more consistently and he can be that big-time player for you. When he was on the field, man, he was good. He was really, really good. He was dynamic. You saw his ability to uh, jump routes, to play the screen game really, really effectively to where teams could not throw that bubble screen, that wide receiver screen to his side because he was coming up and either blowing up the blocking assignment and allowing the, you know, the guys around him to come make a play or he himself was getting into the backfield and making the play. But again, you got to keep him on the field. You got to keep him healthy. If somebody's got a little bit of super soldier serum, they want to give to Gentry Williams by all means, 
injected into that shoulder to keep him on the field because man, he is a dynamic player and he's got really, really good cover ability. When he was not out there last year, I think that's when Oklahoma was at its most vulnerable in the passing game. On the other side at cornerback, you've got good options, but it's you don't know who's going to be your starter over there. You, you like what you have in, in Jacoby Johnson. You like what you have in Makari Vickers. You know, blue chip prospects with good size, good ball skills, you know, good tenacity, guys that can go make a play on the football when it's in the air and are going to help you in the run game. You like Des Malone, who you got from San Diego State in the transfer portal. Good length, good size. Kanai Walker is another guy that's still around that is still like kind of waiting to take that step to become a down in, down out starter for the Oklahoma Sooners at cornerback has done some really, really good things for you when he's been on the field. So you got a lot of really nice options and that doesn't even include a Woody Washington who we thought would probably be a cornerback, but it sounds like they're moving him around. He's going to play a lot of different positions, some cheetah, some safety, some corner, some nickel corner for Oklahoma. And so you don't really know exactly how he's going to factor into the cornerback position battles, but you've got a nice veteran presence in Woody Washington that, Hey, if all else fails, you can throw him out there at the corner and you know what you're going to get. And it's going to be a pretty safe floor. But what you need is you need somebody to step up and take a job. You need either Jacoby Johnson, Macari Vickers, Des Malone, can Walker to say, Hey, that's my job. I'm going to go lock it down over there on that side because for the defense to take its next step, the pass defense has to continue to improve. It has to be significantly better than what it's been at times. I mean, we saw it in the Arizona game, right? Arizona just abused Oklahoma secondary. And if Oklahoma's defense is going to be able to take that step to becoming an elite team, an elite defense, the secondary has to provide some answers to the questions that have played, plagued Oklahoma for a while now. A team that couldn't stop the pass, a team that hasn't been consistent on third downs. Now they've gotten better on third downs. They were better in 2023 than what they were in 2022. And that's a credit to the pass coverage. But if Oklahoma is going to be a contender in the SEC, if they're going to be a team that flirts with 10, 11 games, you got to help your offense out. You got to help your young offense out along your, your offensive line. That's not going to necessarily be settled first week of the season by having a defense that is ready to go play and ready to make plays. And if the cornerback position finds its stride and finds answers, then I think this thing is going to be cooking at safety. I mean, we feel great about safety. I mean, safety might be the position that we feel the most comfortable with, with Billy Bowman returning after having six interceptions last year, three that he returned for a touchdown with Robert Spears Jennings coming back with Peyton Bowen. And then a young group of safeties in Jaden Hardy and Michael Patterson, McDonald and Reggie powers and Michael Boganowski, not in any particular order. That is a really, really strong group. Eric McCarty. I mean, that's a dude that it's easy to forget about because kind of flew under the radar in that 2023 recruiting class. And then, you know, towards ACL in the state championship game for uh, McAllister. But that's a dude that's an athlete and he is a big time playmaker and he's going to factor in at some point, whether it's just on special teams or in some certain you know packages at some point in his Oklahoma career, he's going to be a factor because he's just too good of a football player. But the safety position, I think, will help as Oklahoma kind of figures out what's happening at cornerback and they try to figure out, OK, who's going to be our starters? Who? What's the two deep going to look like behind Gentry? Uh, because we may have to go to that second that second guy, if Gentry's not able to stay healthy on a regular basis. But here's the hope that Gentry stays healthy. And again, you've got enough options at the other cornerback spot that, okay, you maybe you can mix and match, or maybe you can just continue to let competition play out and see, okay, who's going to be the guy that rises to the occasion on a consistent basis and helps us win football games. Because again, you've got a lot of good options at that other corner spot. You love Gentry Williams at the one spot. Now, now fall camp is going to be a big time uh, position battle. And, and again, if Oklahoma's defense is going to take that next step, cornerback has to be an answer to the question. Okay. Where's, where's the biggest step that has to be taken. It's at cornerback. In my opinion, the Oklahoma Sooners earned a commitment over the weekend from a 2026 prox prospect writer mix. What's he bring to the table as well as some other recruiting notes we're going to discuss coming up next here on locked on Sooners. 
When you're hiring for your small business, you want to find quality professionals that are right for the role. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to help find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. LinkedIn isn't just another job board. LinkedIn helps you hire professionals you can't find anywhere else, even those who aren't actively searching for a new job, but might be open to the perfect role. In a given month, over 70% of LinkedIn users don't visit other leading job sites. So if you're not looking on LinkedIn, you're looking in the wrong place. On LinkedIn, 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. Hire professionals like a professional on LinkedIn, where two and a half million small businesses use LinkedIn for their hiring process. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day. Have to turn down the volume with all that shouting. Make the switch to Locked On Sports today. A free 24-7 sports streaming channel programmed for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the screaming. Locked On Sports today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. The Oklahoma Sooners received a commitment for from... Ryder Mix, a four-star prospect, according to On3's industry rankings from Frisco, Texas. And every recruiting segment here on the Lockdown Network is brought to you by LinkedIn. Again, post your job for free at linkedin.com slash college. Terms and conditions apply. Uh, this is a kid, again, four-star, according to On3 industry ranking, the number 12 tight end in the class, the number 36 player in the state of Texas. Uh, On3 themselves had him as a the number 10 tight end in the class and number 25 in the state of Texas, uh, a guy who's been offered by a lot of really intriguing teams. It's always good to go down the, uh, the offer list real quick before we get into some of the notes that we saw or that I saw when watching his highlights, uh, Oklahoma, SMU, TCU, Baylor, Florida state, Missouri, Houston, Arizona state, Penn state, Cal, Oregon, Ole Miss, Pittsburgh, Kansas State, Texas A&M, Oklahoma State, Michigan, Wisconsin, Arkansas, Ohio State, Florida, Auburn, LSU, and Illinois, among many, many, many others. Uh, so you you won a recruiting battle for a 2026 prospect who had a bunch of offers from a bunch of big time programs, and he comes to the Oklahoma Sooners. Now, what is he? Six foot four. Uh, I think on three, he's got him at 220 pounds right now in the class of 2026, again, out of Frisco, Texas, and a dude that plays very much like he's six foot four, 220 pounds. You turn on the highlights and my man is tough. He is tough. He's physical at the catch point when he's getting hit, when the ball is arriving, he is not thwarted one bit by that contact. After the catch, he is making contact and driving through defenders, picking up extra yards, being able to break tackles, and he is falling forward when being tackled. I really, really like his hands. He just looks like a smooth hands catcher, which is important. I mean, so many times it's it you see the the receiver or the tight end kind of fight with the football in the air. Or that's not the case for Ryder Mix, a dude that just again has smooth smooth hands and also a smooth route runner when he's working whether as a slot tight end or an inline tight end, you see him use subtle movements, subtle feints to kind of open up the playing field, open up the defender a little bit more and find more space. Really, really like what he does as a route runner as a blocker. This is going to be an area that he becomes a fan favorite for Oklahoma Sooners fans. He is tough. He's physical. He's somebody that looks for the contact and he plays with really, really good awareness too. that. Okay. After his initial block. Okay. What's next? Where is he looking to go next with his block and often finds the right defensive backer linebacker to, to put his hat on. And when he does, man, he's again, he's a physical player. He's looking to not just block the guy, but to punish the defender and does a really, really good job at that. Uh, one more kind of couple notes just as as a receiver i think he did a really good job adjusting to the football in the air there's a couple times where he's running some seam routes and those are those are kind of tough unless you have an athletic kind of tight end and somebody who has good awareness and good spatial awareness and a good ability to adjust to the ball in the air because it's going to be really really difficult to have that seam route as part of your arsenal because often that seam route's not a perfect 
is not going to be a perfect throw because when it's being run, so much of where the quarterback is going to put the ball is dependent on where the linebackers at, where the safety is playing over top coverage. If, who, if they're playing underneath you at all, if you're being bracketed. So being able to adjust to the ball in the air, I think is a really critical piece to being a tight end because you're going to have to catch the ball at a lot of different angles. Uh, he's a, again, he's a good, good receiver. And again, lined up as an inline tight end, lined up in the backfield as an H back, also lined up as a slot in the slot. So it shows really, really good versatility. Uh, someone that you can line up in a, a variety of places and take advantage of his height and his size. I think he'll be a really good red zone threat uh, for Oklahoma. He'll be a big time third down threat as well. So really, really like the addition that gives Oklahoma two commitments now in the 2026 recruiting class to go along with running back Jonathan Hatton. Just shocking that their first two commitments in 2026 are on the offensive side of the football. So at some point, obviously, Brent Venable, Zach Alley will break the ice on the defensive side. But hey, shout out Seth Luttrell for making things happen on offense and, and keeping Oklahoma just humming offensively. So that's going to be really, really fun to watch. Uh, more recruiting nuggets here. Jaden O'Neill, the five, four star quarterback, a guy that Parker Thune couldn't said it could end up being a five star quarterback by the end of the cycle continues to trend really, really positively toward Oklahoma. Uh, spent time with Oklahoma uh, last week and over the weekend camping. And again, all signs continue to point to the Sooners. Uh, Marshall Levinson of Rivals wrote an article where and talked with Jaden O'Neill, who said, hey, Oklahoma's my number one. And after that, a number of crystal ball predictions came in favoring the Sooners. Uh, you, you can go to a number of sites, but... Uh, Greg Biggins, national recruiting analyst for 247 Sports, uh, issued a crystal ball. And so did uh, Blair Angelo of 247 Sports, a mountain region recruiting analyst, uh, favoring the Sooners as well. And, and that goes with the several predictions that we've talked about at, at different times on this show. It looks like all things are pointing to O'Neill to the Sooners. Now he's got visits with Michigan. He's got visits with Ohio state, and this is going to be a kid that gets offered by pretty much the who's who of college football. And so it will not be surprising to see this recruitment kind of play out a little bit longer. Again, it's really, really early in the 2026 cycle. Kevin Sperry kind of spoiled us with that March of 2024 uh, commitment um, more than a year and a half from his early signing period. Don't necessarily expect every quarterback recruitment to go that way, but with Jaden O'Neill again, Everything seems to be pointing to Oklahoma. After his Miami trip, he talked about, hey, how, he took a picture of his neck pillow that was an Oklahoma neck pillow, uh, thanking the Miami Hurricanes with that neck pillow in the picture. So that goes to kind of show you where his head might be at uh, with the Sooners. But big time player, big size, big arm, and great athleticism and good accuracy as well. So excited about potentially uh, landing Jaden uh, O'Neill uh, with the Sooners. Um, and then they also had a really intriguing uh, wide receiver prospect come to Norman over the weekend as well. Marcus Harris. This is a guy that uh, you might see ranked as a five star in certain areas or on certain sites, um, but a really, really good player. Um, someone that might be their, their wide receiver prospect to, to replace the dude that uh, decommitted earlier uh, a few months ago. Uh, but he's a four star prospect according to the on three industry rankings. Um, and 247 sports, but somebody who, again, legit blue chip prospect, uh, kind of a surprise that he was coming to Oklahoma, according to some of the recruiting analysts. Uh, right now on three has UCLA favored, but it would not be surprising uh, to see the Sooners flip that script a little bit as Emma Jones is able to recruit. So big recruiting weekend. Uh, Michael Fasusi was also in town this past weekend, calling Bill Biedenbo the GOAT. Um, hey, if he's the GOAT, maybe you want to go play with him. Uh, but I think that's going to be a recruitment to continue to watch because just like uh, Jaden O'Neill and just like all these offensive line prospects in the 2025 recruiting class, Fasusi is going to have a lot of options and a lot of people vying for his services. Just like somebody who is about to enter the transfer portal, um, I think officially on Monday, big weekend on the softball front as Nigel Kennedy was reportedly or is reportedly in the transfer portal. We're going to discuss that next and what it could mean for the Oklahoma Sooners. Today's episode is also brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. 
Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's 200 bucks you can use to bet on everything from your the end finals MVP in the NBA to who's going to hit one out of the park. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and add a big win to your summer bucket list. It, you go to FanDuel and you get in on the action at Oklahoma plus 7,000 to win the national championship. Listen, you may not believe that Oklahoma is going to win the national championship, but those odds right there are pretty intriguing. I mean, you go put 100 bucks down with FanDuel on Oklahoma plus 7,000. They win the national title. You get 7,000 back. That's that's an intriguing. Those are intriguing odds right there for the Sooners. But they sit, you know, behind USC, behind Utah, Miami, Texas A&M in the odds to win the national title. Still sitting at seven and a half on the over under on the win totals. I still like the over for the Sooners. I feel like eight is kind of the floor for where they should land. And really, I'm, I see this as a nine, 10, maybe an 11 win team uh, heading into 2024. But go to FanDuel.com slash locked on and make every moment more. Again, new customers get $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. Again, visit FanDuel.com slash locked on. FanDuel is America's number one sports book. So just when you thought there weren't going to be, there wasn't going to be any big news um, this June, as it's kind of a slower time for football, we're in the midst of all the recruiting stuff happening. Well, Nigel Kennedy decided to go ahead and take the news cycle. Uh, there were rumblings that she was going to be entering the portal. Well, then, according to multiple multiple reports out of Topeka, Kansas, where Niger, Nigeria Kennedy is from Kansas, she is in the portal or expected to be in the portal when Monday hits and paperwork gets processed. But that is, man, that is huge. Like the fact that one, she's leaving Stanford, a place where she's been really, really dominant for two years, been the best pitcher in softball for the last two years a team that's been to the women's college world series each of the last two years and entering the portal. I mean, that is one of those landscape shaping shifting moves that could reinforce somebody's national title contender status or take somebody who might not have been a contender and makes them a contender. She is that good. Just look at, just talk about her stats for a second. In 2024, she was USA Softball's National Player of the Year. She led the nation with 337 strikeouts and had a .73 ERA. She was 24-7. and seven. She allowed just 44 walks. Get that, 337 strikeouts to 44 walks in more than 200 innings. She held opponents to a .147 uh, batting average and opponents to a whip walks and hits per inning pitched of .69. Just absolutely dominant. I mean, this was a, a a pitcher that in elimination games during the Super Regional and the Women's College World Series, she was four and one, and she allowed just one earned run. Absolutely crazy. Over the last two years, Nigeria Kennedy has and Stanford have only lost to the number one team in the Women's College World Series tournament. In 2023, it was to Oklahoma, where Oklahoma beat them two nothing and four to two. And this year it was to Texas, who was number one in the tournament, lost four nothing, one nothing to the Longhorns. Those were the only games that Stanford had lost in either of their last two women's college world series appearances. Absolutely crazy. Again, only got only allowed or only received, sorry half a run per game of run support in those four losses. Just bad, just bad, bad, bad. Uh, The Stanford Cardinal, I mean, they made a big splash when they added Taryn Kern from Indiana, who was arguably one of the best hitting second basemen in the country behind Tiara Jennings in 2023, but it didn't do enough to give Stanford the necessary run support to support Kennedy, Uh, a pitcher who, I mean, she'd be undefeated if she was with Oklahoma or with Texas or maybe Florida or Tennessee, but with Stanford just could not get the bats going. UCLA, UCLA is another team that can hit and they can they can put some runs up on the board really quickly. But I mean, this is a huge huge opportunity for the Oklahoma Sooners and for everybody in college softball. But let's talk about what it could mean for the Oklahoma Sooners. Well, listen, you're in a much different place with your roster than what you were 
you know, leaving the women's college world series. You graduated 10 seniors. You lost Kelly Maxwell. You lost Carly Keeney. The, the two pitchers that started for you in the women's college world series finals, you lost Nicole may who was a integral part of Oklahoma's run. Even, even if she didn't have the year that many expected her to have, she was still critical to Oklahoma's success. And especially out of the bullpen, she was fantastic. So you lose three senior arms. You lost SJ Guerin to the portal. So right now you're sitting with, Kirsten Deal, who was really, really good in 2024, and you're sitting with Peyton Monticelli, who again, in limited opportunities, showed that she's capable of getting you through an inning or two. We'll see if Patty Gasso and Jennifer Rocha believe that they can, or that that Monticelli could be a starter for them in 2025. We know Kirsten Deal can be a starter for them. Hopefully, she's able to take a step and and she can be a frontline starter for the Sooners. But I mean, Najari Kennedy is one of those players that. If they're available, everybody in the softball world is going to try to figure out how they can get their get, get her to their team. I mean, she's a five star. If you're if you're going to throw star ratings out there, I mean, she's a five star plus uh, player because of how good she is. We've seen it up close and personal. We've seen it through the Women's College World Series, and this is a move that can reassert Oklahoma as the national title favorite in 2025, despite the loss of Tiara Jennings and Kinsey Hansen and Jada Coleman and Alyssa Brito and Kelly Maxwell and Nicole May, you know, despite the loss of all 10 seniors that you, that you lost, there were big parts of your team's success. Adding Najari Kennedy to your roster as your frontline starter game changer. I mean, it really is. And you have an offense. that's still going to be pretty good because I mean, when was the last time Oklahoma's offense wasn't pretty good. Now, will it be as good as it's been the last four years? Maybe not. But if you add a pitcher like Kennedy, it doesn't have to be as good as it's been the last four years. It just has to be good enough. Because if you're able, if you're averaging five runs, six runs a game, as opposed to eight, nine runs a game, that's going to be good enough for Najari Kennedy. That's going to be good enough for Kirsten Deal for you to go win a lot of, a lot of softball games. Now we'll see, we'll see where this all lands because again, she can, she can name her price out there in the transfer portal with name, image, and likeness. And most, programs that if they have it, they'll pay it because again, she's a, a player that puts you in the national title hunt immediately. As soon as she steps on campus, hopefully it's Oklahoma because that would again, put the Sooners in a spot where they are again, the front runner with, you know, Ella Parker and Cassidy Pickering, uh, you know, with Maya Bland and what everybody expects out of her, uh, you know, I think we feel really, really good about where Oklahoma's direction is. They're bringing in a lot of freshmen, and I imagine that they'll add a batter two or three in the transfer portal. But if you get Kennedy, that really just sets you up to be successful again in, in 2025. Uh, but we'll see, man. It's it's going to be a fascinating recruitment to watch because, again, she's going to have feelers out from everywhere, everywhere, everywhere and everyone is going to be hoping to land Kennedy and bring her to their school. Now, will NIL be the factor? Maybe, but who cares? That's just the name of the game now. If NIL is the biggest factor for her, fine. By all means, go get yours. Go get paid. That's just part of the game now in college athletics. And if Oklahoma loses out, that's just the way it goes. That's just the way it goes. But I have a feel. I have a pretty good feeling that Oklahoma is going to make a a lot of noise, and it's going to upset a lot of people across softball. But hey, the evil empire continues their reign, and they're going to try to continue it through the portal this off season, and with the freshmen that they're adding as well. And they should not apologize to anybody for anything, because they've done the work over the last thirty years to put their program in a situation where they can make this kind of move. They can land this kind of player. The support from the university, from the fan base, the the way that Patty Gasso treats her players, the way that JT and Jennifer Rocha and all of them value the player, value the person really above the player. They value their mental health, their physical well-being. I mean, Patty Gasso talked about why she didn't start Kelly Maxwell in game two of the Women's College World Series Finals. She doesn't want to be somebody that overextends people. 
and overextends pitchers. She said she felt like she'd made a mistake with Paige Parker in the past and wasn't going to do it again. Well, Kennedy, she threw a ton in the postseason for Stanford. She was all they had. And maybe got a little bit overworked. Not that she would ever say so, not that you know the coach would ever admit to it. And um, again, that that elimination loss to Texas where they lost one to nothing. I mean, it was kind of on a fluke play. It was an unearned run that she that that Stanford allowed that Texas went on to win. So she pitched great in that game too. But at some point that kind of takes a toll. And if you can get her to Oklahoma and she's throwing 150 innings instead of 200, 250 innings, how much more effective and dominant could she be for the Sooners? Or if she goes to Texas and they do the same thing, because Texas utilized quite a few pitchers this, this year as well, using a good rotation of pitchers. I mean, how much more dominant could she be if she's not having to throw every single time Stanford has a big game? But man, I cannot wait to watch this recruitment go down. We're going to have it covered here on Locked On Sooner, so make sure you're subscribed to the show. Wherever you get your podcasts, we're free and available on all podcast platforms and on YouTube. Now for your second listen, Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube, and now it's also available on Amazon Fire TV in the free Fire TV channels app. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Find Locked On Sports Today now available on the free Fire TV channels app. Again, follow me on Twitter at John Nine Williams. The show is at Locked On Sooners. Also on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok at Locked On Sooners. So go follow those, hit those subscribe buttons again wherever you get your podcast. But until next time, I'm John Williams, Boomer Sooner. <laughs>